welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel, guys, after yet another special, special victory. And I tell you what, I could get used to this. I really, really could. These are phenomenal feelings amongst the fan base right now. And today, obviously, we're going to be talking more about that 3-0 win over Atletico Madrid on Sunday, about many of the big performances we saw, for instance, like the one from Robert Lewandowski. Wow. And we're also going to hear from João Felix, who has responded to the treatment he received from Atletico Madrid fans. And today, we're also going to be discussing Paris Saint-Germain, and particularly Kylian Mbappe, and specifically, how to stop him. I mean, how hard can it be? Let's do this. But first of all, guys, I do have to give a very special shout out to Abin, who is enjoying the updates through the good and the bad times. And I'm glad right now we are seeing a few more of the good ones. Thank you very much indeed. Shout out to, to Eric Rojas and so much more fantastic support coming in. And I want to shout out as well Tariq, who has been fantastic with his support. And he is also quite sick, by the way, of ESPN FC and their blatant agenda against Barca. And I feel you, my my friend, I really, really do, because let's just hope here that Barca continue on this path, and let's just see what they have to say come the end of the season. Because I do want to start right here by talking about João Cancelo, though, because he obviously missed last night's game against Atleti after being left out of the squad at the very, very last minute before the game, and we assumed that it must be injury-related, but after the game, Fermin Lopez came out and immediately said, look, we as a whole, we as a team here tonight... We dedicate this win to João Cancelo because he is going through a really difficult time at home right now. So that is another reminder there, first of all, of what a real family, what a real tight-knit group this is right here. Such a strong bond between everybody and of which Cancelo has become such a big part of this season. You would struggle to find any player with the passion that Cancelo has. And Chappie said after the game that Cancelo is a really sensitive guy. He's got a very, very big heart. And he said not being able to be here today with the team really affected him a lot, but we dedicate this victory to him and to all of those who could not be here and I wish him all the very best there, Cancelo with what he's going through right now, but we simply must talk about the young man that replaced him, the young man there who had to come in on the left side, huge shoes to fill there, Cancelo's but how well did he do? And I think he deserves a special mention here in today's video, Hector Fort, because he was outstanding, in my opinion. Given the age that he was at, given the circumstances of which he was thrown into this game, because obviously it was quite a last-minute change. Barca here certainly wouldn't have been training all week with Hector Fort at left-back. That was not going to be an expected move. He wouldn't have really been expecting to be involved in this game, and yet... He performs so, so well. Really, really strong on that side. And let's not forget here, despite how comfortable he may look and how easy he makes it look, that left-back spot is not even his most natural position. He is still a lot more comfortable on the right side. And how useful has he been? His ability there to be versatile, to play on both sides, that is so, so useful to us here as a squad. And Barca apparently very much plan on having him as part of the first team squad next season. We already know they are working on a new contract for him. They want to keep him at the club for the long term. And you can see why. He has been so, so valuable. Every single time that we've called upon him, every single time there that he's had to step up, he has done. Hector Fort is a real, real talent. And again, guys, he's 17 years old. He's another 17-year-old player in this team. And I don't think it should be understated here what Barca achieved last night. To go to Atletico Madrid, their home stadium, in that kind of atmosphere, lining up with two 17-year-olds in your back line and coming out of that stadium with a clean sheet. Absolutely incredible. And it's another example, as if we needed any more, of what La Masia can do. We cannot repeat this enough. At Barca, trust in La Masia. If you need help, go to La Masia. If you need support, go to La Masia. If you would like a group of incredibly talented young players, you guessed it, you go to La Masia. What an academy. What a club. We are seeing talent after talent 
being produced. And speaking though indeed about the defensive side of our game guys and indeed in recent weeks how much that has actually improved because on paper Barca have now only conceded once in our past five matches there and that was in the second leg against Napoli, a clean sheet against Atleti, nothing there conceded against Mallorca Athletic Club as well. They're doing really well right now and a clean sheet too against Atafa. And look guys I wouldn't say okay everything is perfect right now, everything is solved in the defensive side of our team. We're rock solid, you know, because sometimes we have had really to rely on top quality saves from Tasteg, and he has been really good in recent matches with some big, big stops, and there have been nervy moments there where the opposition have had real chances, but I think you also have to take into account here the midfield situation, because this defence right now is operating with not a great deal of protection ahead of them right now. There's been real uncertainty in midfield. We're missing, of course, so many players in that area, so I think given the circumstances, given the way that we've had to soldier on through these games, the back line, the performances we've seen from our defenders, it's been exemplary. But of course, guys, it is not only the defensive side of our game, which has improved of late, but you've also got to talk about the attack as well. And I thought that was really evident in yesterday's game, whereby we didn't have full control of it. You know, Atleti were in the game. It did get a bit scrappy at times. But when we got chances in front of goal, when there we were making runs, when we were really opening up opportunities in the final third, you actually felt like we'd scored. You actually felt as though there we were carrying a threat, we had players out there who could make definitive moves in the final third, and we had five shots on goal and scored three times. Now that is the kind of clinical nature we've got to see, because you shouldn't have to have 10, 15, 20 shots on goal a game just to score several goals. You need to be clinical, you need to take the chances that come your way, and that is exactly what we showed in yesterday's game. And of course one of those had to be Xiao Felix, it just had to be, he was all always going to be there or thereabouts if something happened. And I thought, again, given the circumstances, given the treatment that he was receiving from the stands all around him, he did really do very, very well. And to be honest, with Atletico Madrid and their fans yesterday, the only moment of celebration in the entire game they had, by the way, was when Stefan Savic went through the back of Xiao Felix there, when he committed a really bad foul on Felix. That was the only moment they could celebrate. And I mean, really, how sad is that? That is absolutely tragic there, for that to be your biggest highlight of the game and after the match Xiao Felix there was asked about the whistles about the treatment from the Atleti fans and he came out and said the people in the stands do not know the things that happened when I was at the club he said what they say from the outside there that I didn't get along with my teammates the atmosphere wasn't good with me he said that is simply not true he said just look at it yesterday he said after the game I stopped the talk to Lamar to Lino he said they all passed me they come up to me they hug me they talk to me they ask me how my family is how I'm doing he said, I don't have anything against them. They have nothing against me. And the people outside clearly do not know what happened with me at Atletico Madrid. And I thought it was very, very funny then when Felix openly said... I actually enjoyed the match there. I tried to enjoy these matches as much as possible because he said, I always like games against big teams, spicy matches in which the fans provoke you a little. He's openly saying there, you inspired me. You made me want to perform. You really got me up for the game. I want to be provoked. I want to be angry inside. And you see that every time that Felix has faced Atleti this season, two games, two goals. He looked really, really up for it. And all Atleti have managed to do is motivate him. And it's not just about that either. Because what what I would now say is that Atleti fans and what happened inside the stadium last night, they also haven't helped their own club in terms of the negotiating position ahead of the summer with Felix. Because Barca, apparently we know, want another loan deal. They want to try and squeeze as much as they can out of Atleti. Maybe even throw in a cheap buy option. We've heard rumours there of a 20 million buy option in the media last week. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what kind of stance Atleti can take now this summer. We know Simeone doesn't want him. We know that Simeone does not like Chao Felix and now we also know that the Atleti fans don't want him anywhere near the club. So what's going to happen? If Atleti are going to demand more money, more of a difficult deal from Barca, what are they going to say? It's okay, we'll take Felix back. Nobody wants that to happen, including the player. And I don't see Zhao accepting to go anywhere else but Barca. And I think we've got a really strong hand right now. We are really, really on top in these negotiations and that will only be helped 
by what we saw last night. However, guys, it was not just the goal from Xiao Felix which ignited Barca's performance last night because we must talk again about Robert Lewandowski because he not only scored a phenomenal goal there, outrageous finish, going away from goal, but he also recorded two absolutely perfect assists last night. And to do that away at Atletico Madrid, let me just put into some context exactly how difficult and rare that is because Robert Lewandowski now is the only player to have both a goal and an assist in a La Liga game against Atletico in this entire season. So no other player this season has actually had a goal and an assist against them, first of all. But more than that, Lewandowski is now the first player to be involved in three goals in the same La Liga game against Atleti since 2016. And back then, that was Cristiano Ronaldo who did it. So that is a serious, serious performance last night from Lewandowski. And I think Chaffee said it all after the game when he said, this was possibly Lewandowski's best match that he's had in a Barca shirt. And do you feel as though it was right up there? That display last night from Levy, absolutely different class. And I've got to say, guys, this is what we need. This is the Robert Lewandowski that all season long we've been crying out for. And I don't think he's been criticised at Barca because people don't like him, because people don't want him to be at the club and that they don't actually believe in the quality of Lewandowski. I think Lewandowski's been criticised because we know it's in there. We know how good this guy is. He could be up there with the absolute best forwards in the world when he's on it. And last night is an example of the absolute peak level that we need from him, that he can drag us forward in games. He can get us through really tight matches and be the match winner. And with him playing like this, if he can continue it, if he can actually put together a run of games like this, just to use Chavi's phrase again, we can dream. Seriously, guys, that is how good a Lewandowski at his best can be, how much he can elevate this team. And I think with all of the big individual displays right now we're seeing at this club, we can all start to dream. Because let's talk about Paris Saint-Germain. Let's talk about those Champions League challenges that do indeed await us. Because they also played on Sunday there. They were 2-0 up against Montpellier after 22 minutes. But you have to say, they were pegged back to 2 all there, before half time, and this is a team they're playing who are just one point away from the relegation places in France. And it's happened a few times this season with PSG, whereby they've conceded some very cheap goals. They only have the third best defence in the league right now. They are not rock solid either. They've nearly conceded there a goal every game. And in a league that they absolutely dominate, you'd expect them to be top in every department. You'd expect them to dominate all the categories in Ligue 1. But that has not happened in this case. But what they do have, however, unfortunately, is Kylian Mbappe, who went on to score a hat-trick as PSG eventually won the game by six goals to two. And that, by the way, was Mbappe's fourth hat-trick of the season. Not bad. Not bad numbers at all. And for me, it's really this simple. It is genuinely this simple for Barca, ahead of the Champions League against PSG. If you stop Mbappe, you stop PSG. There is no other way of saying it, because obviously they have other threats, they have other qualities in their team. It's not just a one-man show. But I mean, it kind of is in some ways, because if you are able to nullify him, he is the player that can single-handedly get PSG through. He can get them out of trouble. He can turn any game on its head, unless we do something about it. And that is easier said than done, I admit, right? How do you stop Mbappe? How on earth do you go about shutting him down? And of course, one option is that Luis Enrique should become an even bigger Barca legend by actually using these two legs against Barca to learn in even more detail how to play without Mbappe. If you want to know how to play without him, what better time than the Champions League, Lucho? This is your moment to shine. But in the event that maybe that doesn't happen, which we've got to admit, it might not. It is all about space. That is the reality, guys. It is all about Barca in these matches here against PSG, managing and understanding and being focused all about the space. Because we could say, okay, Kunde, Araujo, whoever you like, man-mark him. You follow Mbappe around, you make it clear there your sole aim is to shut him down. And you could even maybe task both of them with really trying to stop and putting them on Mbappe. But I think the way that you actually stop Mbappe, though, is as a 
team. That's the only way, really, that you're going to do it. If you are able to organise yourself to reduce the space, not only in behind, but also in midfield areas there, you cannot give him room, you cannot give PSG's midfield room to find passes in behind, because if you do, Mbappe will destroy you. We saw that in 2021. We have seen him do that to so many different teams. I think that's our biggest task, because I would look at the Super Cup final that we played against Real Madrid there. The kind of space that we left in all different areas of the field. The gaps were absolutely massive. And Vinicius and Co, they destroyed us too. They ran us ragged in that game. And if you leave that kind of room against these kinds of players, these kinds of teams, you will be exploited. But I would like to believe that from that January period, from earlier on in this season now, I'd like to think we've come a long way. I would like to think we've left that Barca behind right now. And we've got the time here. We've got several weeks before these matches. We've got plenty of time to plan, to come up with a clear strategy, a clear approach in this game to stop Mbappe, to shut down the space, to reduce PSG to nothing. And we've got to have that focus. You've got to bring the ultimate concentration to both of these legs. And only time is going to tell us if we can succeed. So indeed, guys, what I would like to know from you all in the comments down below. First of all, how are you feeling now about the PSG games? After this win as well against Atletico Madrid, has that helped with the confidence here? Has that helped with your belief that we could do something special in the Champions League? And how would you go about stopping Mbappe? What would be your approach in this game to make sure that we keep him quiet somehow? Please do let me know, guys, all of your thoughts in the comments down below your full reaction to what we've discussed on the channel today. The feelings, like I say, are absolutely beautiful. And I will see you all very soon indeed to talk lots more about Barca. Thank you indeed for watching, for all of you here getting involved. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Uh -huh.